Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I am your host, Julia Renee. And Kendall Graboff. And today, guys, we have Savannah Joy in the house. Welcome, Savannah. Hi, guys. Thank you for being on today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for being flexible. Oh, yeah, (laughs) thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Guys, if you guys don't know who Savannah Joy is, we are going to go deep into her life today because Savannah and I have been friends for a couple years now, but she moved to Florida did all these things, and she's now back in Austin, Texas. So now we get to hang out with her more. So we really wanted to start with the beginning. Yeah. Where did your fitness journey start? And we'll kind of track it back up to who you are now. Yeah. So, oh, man, Um, if we're talking about the beginning, my fitness journey started when I was honestly like in high school. So Long story short, I'm a triplet. I'm naturally just a small human being. I didn't know that. (laughs) I don't know a whole lot about Savannah, so I'm excited for today. I get to like actually learn. I'm just going to watch Kendall's reaction. (laughs) Whoa. No, um, so I'm a triplet. I'm a naturally just like small human being, and that was kind of like one thing, like starting off when I was younger is um, I just never felt strong. And so my freshman year of high school, I actually had not regular weight training class for like a phys ed um, I had advanced weightlifting, and I had it with okay. this coach. His name was Coach Caney. I think he passed away like, oh, must have been like a year or two ago. And it made me feel like empowered. It made me feel strong. It made me feel more like me. Yeah. So that's actually when I started lifting, but I did a lot of different sports, mainly track and cross country in high school. And from there, wow, do you guys ever just like your mind's racing so fast and you can't catch your breath? That's <laughs> oh, yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah. Take your time. Um, <laughs> And from there, like, I really just enjoyed it. So after high school and when I went to um, KU, I went there for a year. Um, She kind of hit the fan with my family. So I decided to go another route and got my aesthetics license. But I've always been training, always been into some type of fitness within that time frame. And it was always something that, again, felt like me and made me feel stronger, more empowered, more like myself. And so um, it was probably... 2019 mm-hmm. when um, I was approached by another coach to start as a coach and make it as a profession. I was working in cosmetics at the time yeah. and I I absolutely still love cosmetics even though I try to like not associate myself with like girliness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's just something that's like inherently to me because I like to present myself in a certain way. It makes you feel good. It makes yeah. you feel like yourself. So I was in cosmetics for a while and um, of course like you don't make a ton of money that way, and it's you get really burnt out, not as much fulfillment as I get now. Yeah. And so when I was approached to become a coach on another team, um, I was like, yeah, I was like, wow, fine. Like, you know, someone believes in me. Of course, this is what Scott's been telling me all along is you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, finally, someone believes in me. Like, of course, I want to, like, learn even more about coaching rather than just, you know, my own research that I've done before for myself. Yeah. I was like, let's do whatever, continued ed- education. That fizzled out, and I started to work for myself. Um, and then from there, um, it's just been Savannah Joy ever since. I love that. Yeah. Guys, this is so down. crazy, too, because, like, it's, I'm, I can hear you, like, while you're talking about it. It's crazy that it just it does bring you back from how far you came because you were working at Ulta, which is crazy. The way that I met her guys was yeah. I was a hairstylist and a makeup artist and I went to Ulta to get myself some stuff and I was getting into fitness and I was so nervous about like filming. I wanted to be the person that I am now and like the person that you are now. Like mm. I wanted to do what we do now. Mm. So I went in there and I was practicing this new thing about like talking to people <laughs> that like I wouldn't normally and I saw her she and I noticed her delts immediately. It's hard not and to, and that's what at, made me ask. At the gym, it was at Ulta. That's where we first okay, met. Okay, the Sunset Valley one. Just for yes, the yes, yeah. And it's weird because now I live right by it, and that's my Ulta now. But I walked in, I saw her, and her makeup was flawless. Her hair was done so nice, and I'm the person that wears full face and makeup and hair to the gym. So I saw her. She had muscle, and I went like, "Oh my god, do you lift?" And it was so exciting because she was the first friend that I ever made in this industry, ever. I love that. And we were both doing hair and when she wasn't doing hair, she was more like aesthetics and stuff. So I was like, Oh my God, we're on the same track. Like we're doing this thing, but we don't want to be doing it. So me and her stood there and talked for like 30 minutes and I don't normally do that. That's not me. So we just hit it off immediately. And then 
she introduced me to my first Gold's gym ever that I, I've never been to Gold's. And then yeah, here I am. White. Yep. You're in Sunset Valley too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just really crazy what to see. What a full circle moment. I know. Like I met her doing it's, what I did in the past and now it's so different. Things have so changed. It's a crazy full circle moment because when I started to see you gain more uh, traction and like just more of a following, you know, it, it was really cool to see. And I was like gobsmacked. I was like, holy fuck. I mean, this girl has changed, but like in a really good, cool way because I, I mean, I think when you start to see people um, – you know, gain a following internally, those that don't, at least I started to have more challenges for myself as like, you know, imposter syndrome, but you're only like growing more into yourself because it kind of challenges you in that way. But it was really cool to see you do that. Like when I was in Florida, I was like, oh my God, Julia's blowing up. She's doing her own thing. This is great. This is awesome. It was super cool. And yeah, that's kind of just like where it started for me. And she was the one who inspired me to like start actually taking videos. And it took for me to find another girl that was, okay, sh- there's someone else out there that wants to break free from this norm and do something different. So I really want to speak to that. Like, how was that transition from working at Ulta, being, you were really good at it. And I know you mm-hmm. took your job really seriously mm-hmm. when you had it, but that switch from doing something that was safe and that was comfortable from doing what you do now, owning your own business, moving, buying a house, like working with Seabum, like all of these things. And we'll get into that. But what was that like for you? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I forgot the first half of it. But what was was it like transitioning from being in like a safe, secure job to working for yourself? Well, I really did enjoy um, working with people like in person. Like I, that is still an aspect that I really, really miss in this kind of situation or at least going to the gym like fills my cup there because even if I'm not talking to somebody, like I still enjoy being around people. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so with that, it was kind of funny because when I was approached to, you know, go into the fitness industry um, and look and be like a lifestyle health and fitness coach, um, from that perspective, like I never had the confidence myself to like go out and do it. I'm not the type of person I've, I've recognized it. My significant other is, and I view you guys are too. Um, at least in my eyes that you guys are the type of people of like, if you want to do something, you go out and do it. Like I've never had that like strong intuition within myself. I wish I did, but I've just Mm -hmm. came to the terms like, I'm just not that person. I have to approach it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, that, uh, I was just like, I'm going to have to continue this on because one, it has so much more opportunity than if I was to stay at Ulta at retail. Um, So from there, uh, I just have recognized that it's, it's an ever running process and you have to continue to kind of like see where your next steps are. So I need a refresher. And what was the second half of the question? Dude, I don't even know myself. I was just so like interested. But really what we were just talking about was like that transition and how you felt moving from doing something safe into doing something that was a little uneasy. Like how was that transition for you? How did you feel? Was there any doubt? Oh, I don't think there was any doubt. I was honestly so excited to try something new in a different industry. And, Mm -hmm. you know, just that I was able to learn from somebody at that moment too. And since then I've done Um, continued education, certifications, seminars, classes, things like that. I've had an amazing opportunity to be, I mean, not only like just surrounded, you know, by Chris and Ron Revive, but like even my coach at that time, I since transferred to a female coach because I wanted to experience that. Um, My coach at the time, Alan Kress, is just the most insanely smart human. And I feel like he really helped me elevate at a time where, Scott and I just kind of like started fresh again in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So during that time, that transition, it's almost, it's, it's so cliche to say, but just like really just like rolling with the punches. And I think if you can like try to remind yourself to one thing that I've like consistently posted about a few times is like being an eternal learner yeah. um, is a really important thing because it gives yourself time and grace to like have those fuck ups, have those failures and stuff. Um, I also think that's what makes a good coach because then you can relate to your clients more than if you were just like this perfect, I know everything type of mentality. Like it's, (laughs) it's better to stay curious and stay learning because then you can help more people. Yeah. hundred percent. We've all done that one thing where we kind of look back on either something that we said or our form or this and we're like, why the fuck did I do it that way? Why did nobody tell me? Oh my God. I I have archived all my old workout videos from like when we first started. I just did a few of those and I was just like. 
you know, j- just for my sanity, I don't even care about anything else. Like, I don't want to be like putting that out anymore or just, yeah. oh, yeah. I was just like, I know I'm so, I, I feel so much more refined now that it's just like, that's not an accurate representation representation of me. For at sure. The moment. And that's what I want to ask. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so with this transition of like, you are approached to become a coach and you take that leap, were you already starting your online presence? Were you consistently posting or was that oh, like all brand new? That's a good question. I mean, like I said, I've, I've always been into health and fitness on my own, you know, just by myself, what I really enjoyed and helped me felt like my feel like myself um I was starting to just like post like went on Instagram um the multiple swipes of like just different workout exercises and stuff because of course that's what everybody really enjoyed following Mm -hmm. at that moment Mm -hmm. and I was just like you know what I was like I you know felt like I had a good enough physique which I think in general you don't have to have a good enough physique to post what you want right Mm -hmm. like you post yourself but I felt confident within myself. I was just like, I'm just going to put some workouts in there. Not even just being like, this is what you should do. But it's just like, hey, like. This is what I do. This is what I do. Or like, you know, just put out some ideas there. Like for when I was like, if I was traveling and stuff. Or like, if I wanted to go to the apartment gym. So lo and behold, um, I was putting that stuff out. And as the transition came, whenever I was starting to be approached, um, the other uh, coach who um, wanted me to work for her, Um, she just approached me and said, Hey, I, I love what you're doing. I love what you're putting out. I was probably only putting out like actual fitness stuff and not like my, you know, like 2016, like Instagram stuff at Mm -hmm. that time, Mm -hmm. like just not even thinking about posts, um, for probably just like a handful of months, maybe like spring of 2018 or was it 2019? Either one of those. Um, and she just approached me and asked me to work out. And so, with that, like, she approached me, like, within the first workout, we went to Chipotle after. And, yes. uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with Chipotle, though, Kava. Way better. But Way better. Kava bloats me, though. We were saying that, too. After after we Every leave Kava, time. we're, like, so bloated. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. It must be the spices. I was just about to say that it might be the spices. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mediterranean. Yeah. Two completely different tastes, but I love the concept. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I was just posting without the intention of like becoming something or wanting to. I was just yeah. putting it out there because yeah. it was like, cool. It was like, whatever. Um, and so off of that, that's when it the, tra- the transition, it was actually very much like from A to B. There wasn't any kind of like middle ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, once I said, you know what? Yeah, this is like something I want to do. Like I, I thought about it and I actually got really emotional because even though like you should very much believe in yourself, it, it very much helped me get to believing in myself more yeah. that like mm-hmm. somebody was believing in me to like be able to handle, handle somebody else's like health and fitness and like just be able to like start a new career. Like I was really excited about it. Um, and just the fact that it could help me become more financially stable. Like yeah. that's just always been a big thing for me. If you, if nobody, if people say they're not concerned about money, that's great. But I think for a majority of the people, like you want to be financially stable, like you of want course. to feel like you have a good cushion. And that was a very big thing for me. And if, to have that opportunity, I was just like, you know, if 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 anything happened to my family, like I could like put out funds for that. Yeah. Like I, I had a cushion for like any situation for myself or for my family, which was big. I'm wondering where that came from. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, my parents divorced when I was younger. Um, and so it was always uh, my mom is just the hardest worker alive. I asked her how she did all this shit when us triplets were younger and she would drive three, four hours um, in the process of like divorcing my dad, which I so very much love my dad. Yeah. Very much love my dad. Um, But in general, she was getting her, her master's or she got doctor uh, grandfathered into a uh, program for occupational therapy. And she was driving from Wichita to Kansas city. Oh my God. Every weekend, I think, and she would take one of us kids and cycle through the four of us kids every weekend. This happened and with my family too, so I'm like go resignating. Go to school, go to work. Mm-hmm. And I saw how hard my mom worked. Um, and it was just kind of fucking nuts because she just had to do it. Like, and, and there was just no question. Like she had to. Um, I Like I said, I absolutely love my dad. This is not doubting my dad whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It's just not necessarily the smartest human with like finances and life decisions. It's, and it's I'll just nice leave it at that. a <laughs> woman like business focused, like money, like just a hungry, like woman to yeah. look up to. That's how my mom is. She's like very independent, like, oh, gets mom, whatever she wants. Through, my mom has been the breadwinner the entire time. So that's, that's all awesome. I've known. I've never known a family situation of, um, the dad and the mom. And you have like, you know, both incomes. Cause my dad, you know, just, um, 
I didn't make a lot of money after as kids. Mm -hmm. So um, after uh, the divorce. And so with that, I think that that was a good question. I mean, I think it just kind of stemmed from, I didn't have a bad childhood, but I, looking back, I could see the challenges that my parents had to deal with. Yeah. Probably would, like seeing your mom kind of struggle financially. Oh, she never let us see it. Exactly. Not until I was in high school. Yeah. You notice like how much is sacrifice and like the going back and forth and the yeah. like still maintaining her own mental health doing that is probably <laughs> like, yeah, yeah like helped <laughs> you hard. realize like, okay, I, I don't want to be put into that position. And if I do, it kind of gives you that sense of like, you, you want to now be the one who's able to provide for your mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, again, just, you know, my dad's kind of not so in a amazing financial or health position right now. And so it's, it's even making me think right now, like, you know, you, you just need to be able to, in case like shit really hits a fan of family, like at this point, like mm -hmm. just, even though they wouldn't probably accept it because they yeah. want to live their life the way that they want to, I guess it just like mentally helps me. Yeah. Um, because, like, even so, if Scott and I talk about, like, vacations and stuff, and we do have enough to take a vacation, but it's hard for us to spend that money right now. It's so yeah. weird, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a weird spot to be in. But thankfully, like, with the transition, it's it's gotten us to a more, like, stable position That's to where, good. like, we don't have to be, like, you know, drastically worried. And when, funny enough, when I was approached to transition into coaching and, you know, took that route, it was right before that. So January of, like, 2019 mm – -hmm. Scott quit his job, which he was making like $80,000 a year. He was selling private aircraft. It was a pretty cool job, but Damn. he hated it. He was cold calling. He was at <laughs> yeah. home all day. Yeah. yeah. He was really great at it. He's an amazing people person. I could make an entire podcast about my significant other. So like <laughs> Scott, you know that you like. Really we'll have to have you drill. both on together. I That'd know. Be fun. Guys, because oh Scott's awesome too. Like he's an incredible photographer. Does he do any videography? Oh yeah. He's, yeah. He I like mean, does the whole thing. I've reached out to him like kind of recently and let him know that like you guys were probably my biggest inspiration as far as like taking fitness content from like an iPhone mm -hmm. mirror selfie to using cameras and like taking content and his video or photo editing, he did a video on like how to edit on Lightroom. And that was like one of the first videos I saw on how to edit. Um, when I was like, Oh, the one at our apartment in Lakeway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's going to get a hoot out <laughs> no, of No, I, I had messaged him when you guys were moving back and I was like, Hey, I want you to know, cause I do professional photography She's now really good. and I was yeah. like thank you and I was like you are you were the one that like first taught me how to even or what Lightroom was and I was like mm -hmm. so it's just like crazy now that like you guys are like part of my life so it's just yes, like cool that's yeah so true. You look at you you and Scott have inspired both of us in so many ways yeah, without even really knowing yeah it just I mean it, this is uh kind of like the first situation of like having friends yeah before we developed in a deeper relationship knowing previously and being able to kind of like form a deeper connection and like hearing like the how Scott and I have somehow had like a mm -hmm. you know a, a role in your guys's lives mm -hmm. is kind of like crazy yeah. <laughs> but it's really really cool because I mean it just it makes me feel like closer to y'all too which I think is like another perspective of like when I came back here I mean Austin Texas always felt like home and I know we'll probably cover this mm -hmm. later in a topic but um, we just always wanted to come back. And, like, I already knew Julia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though we didn't connect a ton, I was just like, maybe if something happens, I was like, dude, I'd love to reconnect with this chick. Like, she's mm -hmm. doing some really cool shit. And then Scott told me about you. And she's like, yeah, she messages me all the time. And I was like, that is too fucking cool. And yeah. we're best friends. Look how, yeah. look how everything is interconnected. <laughs> Another full circle There's moment. <laughs> nothing happens on accident. It's just, it's. That's. Oh, wow, it's that so gave true. me chills. That's a, like I got chills like right here. That's <laughs> actually like incredibly chill. Nothing happens on accident. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's all happening for some sort of reason, no matter how good or how bad it might seem. Like the example that I always use is that we've all dated a crappy guy. Okay. And in the moment, <laughs> we're Maybe like a loser, but not a crappy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say I got really, really lucky <laughs> with yes. my exes and my current situation. Yeah. yeah. But like that, that, that feeling that you get when you feel like your whole life is ending and you're like, what do I do without this person? Hindsight 2020, you kind of look at it and you're like, if I didn't have that experience, I yeah. wouldn't be with Zach. I wouldn't be with Scott. Like it's just, it's all happening for a greater reason. purpose and it even if it seems so deep and hard to move through in the moment 
it's all happening for yeah. you in some sort of way. Really quickly, like how was uh, your family dynamic and like situation growing up similar to mine? Because I'm just like so intrigued because I never <laughs> yeah. hear the same situation that I have. <laughs> we So my parents actually weren't divorced, but my mom was always a stay-at-home mom. They're divorced now, but that's like as of recent. Um, my mom got her first job, got promotions like really quick. Cause she is like at the core, like a hard working woman. A milf. Like, yeah. She like, she, does she like talk about it? And she kind of, yeah, she's, she's lives to work. Gotcha. Like she doesn't work to cool, live. Cool, cool. She loves her job. She's like top producing in what she does. She works in the car industry. Um, anyway, so she got a promotion, had to, I'm from New York. She had to move to Pennsylvania and she didn't want to take us away from school. So she would go and live there and drive for, Actually, when she first moved six hours back every weekend, she would sometimes take us back with her um, because she just she just wanted to start providing. And she knew that like making that sacrifice in the long run would help us with like paying for college and stuff like that. Uh, Was it uh, also because she just wanted the additional like cushion for you guys? Yeah. Your dad was also making like a good substantial. Okay. My dad had his own business. So it was like rocky. It was like some years he would make a lot more, some years, (laughs) as we all know. more than a standard (laughs) salary. So I think she just wanted that like safety and security. She also wanted her own money again because she was a really hard worker before having, I have three brothers. So there are four of us and I'm the youngest. So after me. I'm the youngest too. Okay. (laughs) I feel like I always connect with like younger too. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so anyway, yeah, so she would just go back and forth. So that similar aspect of like kind of sacrificing and like going for like trying to be selfish for herself in the sense of like wanting to provide, but also like making the drive back every weekend to make sure she was still there for us, always putting on a brave face, like never letting us know anything like financially was bad because it it might've been, and I still don't really know. Um, and then when I turned 18, they like started going through the divorce process and now she like lives alone in Seattle and is like fucking thriving. It, it's so. like for the better for the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I Absolutely. can't, I 100% can't cause your parents are still together, mm-hmm. which I'd love to hear like, like almost 30 years, <laughs> Yeah, which I think is like so cool because in a perspective, um, at Kendall again, I don't know if yours is the same, but you know, I do wish that I could have like experienced that you, but like, you know, life turns out one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's like incredibly cool. Cause one thing that I just always thought was like insanely cool is like your stupid close to your family mm-hmm. and like my family's not we actually live all in like different areas mm-hmm. my parents live in georgetown i see them a lot they used <laughs> yeah. to be neighbors and my sister <laughs> for like is a my, long time yeah, my like, sister is my assistant that's a foreign concept to me yeah and foreign for me concept. it's like it's it's just so normal that just proves like how many different dynamics that you can have as a family and none are necessarily good and none are necessarily bad they all have their things yeah. but they make us who we oh, are yeah. And I almost got to experience both because they were still together as in like married for so long. So I like got the love from both. It was just separate. And then we had moved to Texas and lived away from him for so long. When did you move to Texas? Um, I moved on my 16th birthday. It was just me and my mom. My one brother who was also still in high school stayed in New York. And then my other two brothers are older. So they were out. That's freaking cool. Yeah. Do you still have your brothers in New York or around in that area? Two are Houston and then one just moved to Florida from Cedar Park. So we're, we're, we still talk every day. We have family chats. We just now have two family chats. (laughs) I cannot have a family chat with (laughs) with my dad. My dad gets so confused and so mad because he's, my dad's, um, 70, which he's like a lot older. He's adorable. He's a lot older. How old was your dad when he had you? Like 40. Uh, I think my parents were 35. My mom and dad are like in their mid 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have like older parents for my age, but mom, dad, if you're listening, y'all look good as hell. (laughs) Just saying. But my dad gets so confused with group chats. Like he doesn't know what's going on. He, he hates it when we put him in. So we have like a Pincero ladies with my mom and my sister. We just (laughs) send like dog pictures and I try to say that my dog is cuter than my sister's dog. Fun shit. Yeah, Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, that's really cool. Um, the one thing that I really wanted to talk about in your story, oh, because you were saying that when you got approached for coaching, and I love how self-aware you are, that you're maybe not the person that's going to be the first one to go out there and go get it. I love that because there's probably a lot of people listening that are feeling that right now. And not everybody is like, oh, I'm going to go after and I'm going to go get it. I'm definitely that person now, but I not, I wasn't that person then. Like, I'm the person that's like, I'm going to be in movies. I'm going to be on the Olympia stage. Like, I, I'm so confident in these things that they're going to happen, but it wasn't always that way. But I love that you said that because 
people can see you and where you are right now and be like, oh my God, like she's so fucking awesome. Like look at her body. Like she's got everything going for her, her photos. But in reality, you never, you didn't really believe in yourself enough to oh, even no. do it in the first place. So uh-huh. sometimes I really think that it takes somebody to see something in us for us to move. Yeah. And, uh, it, it does. And I, uh, I recognize that like, I am the person to where like, if you tell me to do something and I'm working with you, like I'm actually, and I'm just being completely like honest with myself. Cause I know other people are like that. Um, when it's not your significant other, yeah. whenever you're working with them, because as much, I would love to like not be with Scott for a, just a smidge of time frame in my life and kind of like work with him without being like intimate with him so Mm -hmm. that I can kind of give him like a little bit more of that respect of like, Hey babe, like you should get this done. You should do this. Like I already do and kind of like have my set routine for what I'm doing right now. So it is hard for me to morph into like adding something on, on top of that, Mm -hmm. even though it is completely doable. Like I just take these very long approach, (laughs) the long game, baby, introducing it. So (laughs) I feel like that (laughs) builds more confidence because you get to like learn as you go instead of just like jumping into something. Yeah. And Scott and I were just talking about that last night with like um kind of just like my confidence my my education the the courses that I've taken and the people that I've been able to work with and mentorships um that has taken a while from start to where I am right now to actually feel like really confident with a lot of people that I approach like 98 percent of the clients that I approach or that approach me um feel really confident that like I can help them that I can put things in place that I can like have a perspective for it that I can have like a timeline because before it was just like what do I start out with? Like, you know, mm-hmm. such and such told me this before and I read this and this course said this and you're just like, oh my God. So like, yeah. you really just have to give yourself like this huge grace period to like, you're not gonna know shit right off the bat and mm-hmm. stop being so fucking Nobody stubborn does. with yourself. Yeah, yeah. So stop true. being so stubborn with yourself and recognize that like, just like you're a kid, you don't hit 18 and then you stop learning. Mm-hmm. You know, just like when you're a kid, you have to constantly learn. And that's literally what life is. And I know it's, again, just like a thing that people say consistently. But it's so freaking true because Scott actually looked at me last night because we had, you know, some fun things happen business-wise. And he was like, how do you feel? And I was just like, I feel like it's it's well-deserved. Like before mm-hmm. when I would have good, ta- good times and like um, – you know, just financially good months and such, because, you know, it'll, you'll have your ups and flows. I just didn't felt des- deserving enough of it. Yeah. yeah I wasn't, worthiness aspect I wasn't of it. like, yeah, fuck yeah. I should like make this much money. And here we go. Like I want to make 5,000 more the next month or whatever it is. It was just like, okay, cool. Like I have to like, you know, continue to keep that. Like yeah. it was always kind of like that stuck in the grind kind of, oh, I have to like hurry it up and like keep it up and stuff like that. So it's um, almost like you're, you're waiting for it to end. Or you're like oh, yeah. thinking that it's going to end, so you're chasing oh, yeah. it. I also wonder where that comes from. Oh, I have no <laughs> idea. That- I'm just so curious. I'm always so curious about how people grow up and like the things that happen, how it affects them as an adult. I don't know. I think maybe just because I've seen my dad in so many different financial places yeah. um, in my life, because we would either drive four or six hours to go see him. He was either with my grandpa or he was with my ex stepmom at the time. Or like, you know, he finally made the move out there um, to Western Kansas where we were living. Like there was just so many different situations that I think maybe making some of a correlation to that, that like yeah. I just saw so many different situations and there wasn't one spot aside from my mom's house, of course, but like with my dad. Um, Cause like, I, I would definitely say like I'm a daddy's girl growing up. Um, but it's so funny when you're an adult, how you see things differently and mm-hmm. you just don't anticipate that growing up. And mm-hmm. I'm having so many more of those moments growing up. Um, but they're enlightening. It helps you learn more about how you approach things. So I think what that stems from is I saw so many different situations that my dad was in mm-hmm. based upon like his choices or like whatever happened at that moment um, that I just never totally saw stability, even though my mom did provide like stability for us kids. Mm-hmm. Like I, w- I was never deprived. We always got what I, we wanted like um, and stuff like that. But like there, there was definitely like turmoil just like anybody else has. Yeah. Um, so in that instance, I think I've just seen so many different instances with my dad that it was just like, oh, you know, like you could be making X amount of money like he was for a period of time and literally have anything he wanted Mm -hmm. and then, you know, file bankruptcy for the third time in his life. I'm Mm -hmm. totally not trying to dog on my dad. No, it's okay. It's just the facts. Yeah. I I noticed that from my dad, um, not to like that extent, but my dad has owned his own business for almost – What's he 30 do? years also. He has a shutter and blind business. Cool. 
And um, it's called Ray Mar, which is Rachel and Mark. <laughs> it's so cute. But he's had it for <laughs> such a long time. But with that, I have seen what being an entrepreneur is like without even knowing it is that there's sometimes where you can do really Great well moments. and there's sometimes where you can do really bad. And I think as a kid, you can interpret that in two different ways. You can say, I don't ever want to be a business owner because I don't want that to go. I don't want that fluidity yeah. of not knowing what's going to happen. Or you can say, you know what? I want that lifestyle because I, I don't want a boss, but I can control the ebbs and flows of money. So I definitely saw that with my dad knowing it now mm -hmm. that that's what it was. Yeah. And I've never known myself more until probably about 27, 28. And like right now yeah, that like, I feel like I can be more direct in what I want in life because mm -hmm. I am I just feel like I kind of, I, I, I roll with it. Whatever's happening, I'm just like, cool. Like, mm -hmm. let's just continue to roll with it. This is great. You know, like it, it's stable, whatever it is. Yeah. So I think in that perspective, um, I just lost my train of thought. But it, in a sense, like I've never seen something in my life to where it was just like so black and white for me. There was always so much gray. Mm -hmm. And so it was hard for me to like choose a side or like choose like what my thought process was and what I wanted But to we do. don't have to mm -hmm. choose a side. That's the thing. Living in the true. gray is where we're supposed to be. You know, we're always trying to be, I need to do it like this or I need to do it like this. Same That's thing with Scott. diet and fitness. I either need to be all in or I'm all out. Yeah. But our life is so much of the gray and I, I, I really struggle with that being in the gray. I'm an all or nothing mentality. Really? If you just look at what my life is like, like, well, I mean, I think your goals are very much pertaining to that. Like yes. you have to be on a lot of the time. And so it's like 90% of the time, maybe 80% of the time, like throughout the year, you're on off season exactly. or like you have this little teeny time period of like where you can like be more lax, but it's so foreign to you that you're just like, I don't know. What to yeah. Do. This is just this how is I've not been operating. Normal. I am screwing up right now. Shit's going in the fan. Like, you know, these two weeks are going to screw everything up for my next season. So like, true. is that kind of like what goes through your head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. I mean, because my life is like six months of the year are at a hundred percent, then six months of the year are just not. So I live in that black and white so much and I put myself in that black and white so much. So trying to live in the gray is something that's really challenging to me. So that inspires me from you that you're like, oh, like, I'm just the complete opposite. I'm not oh, miss yeah. go with the flow. I'm, you're Scott. I'm, I'm miss, Savannah. Like, yeah, Scott's yeah. I'm in like the you. black and gray. And I really think that we... In white. <laughs> yeah, we really just need that balance. Like, Kendall is that for me. She's a little bit like chiller and I'm like anxiety central. I'm like, I feel like <laughs> we've taken the good aspects from each other yeah. though because she's taught me to like be more of a go-getter and like, and really chase things, stand up for myself, set boundaries, like all That's these me. things because I'm very like a... I'm just chilling. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm yeah. like very And both can cool be great that. and mm -hmm. both can be very bad if they're too yeah. much in the black or if you're too much in the white. Like they can go really bad. Yeah. For you. And I think I saw with my dad that, you know, he he uh just whatever decisions he was made, it was kind of like always in the gray. Mm. Um and with my mom, she like had to be one or the other at mm -hmm. that moment. Like she didn't really have a choice. Yeah. And so it was like two parent situations of when I would like go stay with my dad or go stay with my mom. My dad's was like this like little vacation and shit. Like yeah. there were so many instances. The cool dad. Like, yeah. Like one time, like he was living in a lake and stuff like that. And <laughs> it was such a, a crap situation, but all of us kids thought it was so cool. And yeah. we would have like go-karts and we'd like go see all these like other kids that lived in the lake. But it really like in reality, it's not the best situation. Yeah. But like we thought it was coolest time and we go back to my mom's and be like, Ugh. but like structure. Yeah, yeah. And not necessarily structure, but like my mom was, I, I feel for my mom and I've never held any animosity towards my parents, uh, which I don't, I don't know why I haven't, but in a sense, like I, I was just really glad that I actually get to see them for who they are. Um, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of helped me like, I don't know, just have yeah. better relationships with them now. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we grow up, Parent like dog. we start to see our parents as humans when we're kids, we see them as almost like little celebrities. Like yeah. we look up to like them. Perfect. We catch a bunch of things from them that we don't realize we catch. And now like my relationship with my mom is better than ever because we're Same. human Same. to human instead of mom to daughter. And I can tell her all of these things and the way that I try and like implement things into my life. Like she helps me, I help her. And like, literally my mom is my favorite person to hang out with now. Same. She's literally <laughs> me. My brothers make fun or of I'm me. I'm her actually. <laughs> like we're so much alike. So when we operate, it's like, it's really cool. So I love that. Like, as you get older, you start turning into like 
friends with your parents and you start being human to human instead of like parent to child. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really a different dynamic. I really hope a lot of people can have um, a situation with their parents where they can have like a respectable relationship and like yeah. them respect you as an individual and an adult now to where like you can have these real cool, fun, enlightening conversations with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And then, you know, you respect them enough to not see them as like, oh, it's my mom. Like, yeah. no, Can't you see this. Can't even like you So yeah, I, it, it's really cool to be able to see like how those direct correlations between the three of our lives like, um, shapes us have us how we are now it's mm -hmm. very true because my siblings are completely different yeah. Yeah. thanks mom and dad thanks. all of our mom and dads we love you thank you for <laughs> we should have helping us on our journey we should have done this in like may or june i know <laughs> right right, right? Yeah. um i have some questions kind of going back to like your career and what got you here so we kind of got the timeline up until you were now put under this coach were you working was she feeding you clients or were you she was yes okay. I, I was very fortunate in that situation yeah mm -hmm. and this was Dela, correct correct yeah, yeah. Dela was on our podcast a couple weeks yeah. ago yeah oh i mm -hmm. didn't even put two and two yeah. together yeah. okay yeah. When I was she's great through, i was like oh my god cool it was like <laughs> a little tidbit um i just want to know what the transition from like how long you were doing that and what took you to i'm assuming you're on your own now yeah yeah, so it was actually a rather, like, super quick process in that, too, of, like, me just becoming by myself, um, is when I was with um, uh, Dela and her previous team, I uh, just recognized that there wasn't a few things that, like, we totally, like, went eye to eye on, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, I was kind of in this situation where like, well, I, I don't want to go back to Ulta because this is something that's still brand new and I'm so green at it. Like there's so much more learning to do. There's so much more time to do it that like, why would I, why should I give myself an excuse to like, oh, well, it didn't work out. Like I'm going straight back exactly. to Ulta and kind of mm -hmm. like regressing, right? Like those are actual choices you can make. You can either choose to regress or not. Um, and from that, I was just, I said, uh, you know, while she was like feeding me clients, you know, of course, like I was learning a lot from her, but then also, um, have like my previous experience from like being able to do my own research and stuff. And I, uh, around that time just recognized like, Hey, like, you know, we, j we chose to go separate ways. We had a mutual conversation. Um, and from there I recognized that like, I had to continuously learn to better serve, obviously, you know, my clients, but also yeah. like it's so much more, not even, it is even, but not even just to serve your clients better, but like to help you enjoy the process more because from where I was then, like just starting out as a coach to where I am now, two completely different people, even though I'm the same human. Um, it's so fun being able to, you know, um, accurately articulate a plan in place, how they're feeling. Hey, like, you know, if, and if, I'm, if I'm interpreting this data with my client and they're checking here, then, you know, maybe I feel like they're feeling this certain way. So I'm going to like implement this to whereas before you wouldn't have that, that yeah. intuition kind of like, you know, with your coach, like, I'm sure there's been times where like, you're like, no, I absolutely have to go on 24 seven, like, you know, no breaks, whatever the case is. And he's kind of been like, Hey, Julia, yes. like, how are you feeling? We're going to do this. We're going to yeah. do the opposite of what you're thinking right now. So it's really fun being able to like develop more of that, um, intuition, knowledge, yeah. education, confidence that mm -hmm. goes along yeah, with it. Yeah, it's like a blend of both of like book smarts and then like intuitive coaching. Like Zach, he coaches a lot of people on mindset and that's what he loves so much. And a lot of it is intuitive just off of life experience yeah. and like seeing how people interact. And that's one of my favorite things about you that I think that you're really good at <laughs> is the education aspect of it. Like, it's very huge. Me, I'm very much into the intuition, but not as much as, like, the education standpoint. But you are super, super I mean, informative about everything. You've taught me a lot, like, I even mean, I short really time. appreciate that so much because, yeah. I mean, probably up until this past year, like, education was, like, my biggest insecurity. Anything I posted, like, Aww. I would just, like, double check and triple check things. And it's Never just, like, thought that. Nobody ever wants to be called out, but, like, it can have some valuable lessons to it. But, like, I think if you're always trying to put in, you know, your best research, your best, you know, um, not intuition, but your, um, your best intentions forward, yeah. you know, and you can, like, own up to, like, any kind of, like, things that aren't correct like people see through that and it was such a black and white mm -hmm. thing even just like two three years ago to where like if you're incorrect you're incorrect and you're like gone like mm -hmm. at least that's like what I would think in my head and be like mm -hmm. okay cool nobody's ever gonna like work with me because I was you know wrong about one thing mm -hmm. or like whatever the case is so um yeah I I really like so much appreciate that because I don't view myself that way but I will say like you know having this conversation now like like I said, just with my clients, like I'm the most confident I've been with my clients now. And I'm even more excited to learn 
um, you know, future things and like continued education. So like, I, I so very much appreciate that because yeah. it's so many conversations I've had with Scott of like, you know, should I even do this anymore? You know, I can't even help this client, but that's also coming to the situation where like, if you feel like you truly like have tried every single thing with your client, this is where like connections and like colleagues and like, you know, yeah. people that I've been uh, mentored by and who are actually good friends of mine, you know, I've just recognized so like, sometimes you just have to like suck it up yeah. financially or confidence wise in like your own ego would be like, Hey, sure. I think this person is better going to serve you because we've tried X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know, I've literally tried and I want to be that person, but I know I'm, I can't do that for yeah. you. And so you have to have that gumption to just be like, Hey, I, you know, you're just going to be so much better served. And I want to see you be able to get the results that you've been working so hard for. And this person is going to be able to help give you that yeah. because they've had more experience. Like that's never a bad thing to own yeah. up to But that. it seems like it, right? Oh it my God. It's like just, it, I never it wanted like to do that. I yeah. failed. Like I can't yeah. do this. I'm the that's, worst. That's but a valuable failure. Yeah. You know, in a sense, because a you're helping them, like regardless of if you can or cannot help them, they're going to really appreciate that oh, you were honest. If anybody and did that for like, me, I'd be like, I Fuck, give clients I love to you. so many people. I'm yeah. like, I can't do that. I, I go, here, go to Kendall. I'm like, here, go to Zach. Here, go to Kerrigan Pike. Her and her husband do bodybuilding. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm mm -hmm. just straight up and honest. Was before I would have tried to like make it work. Because you felt like you had to do that because you were a social media presence or? Yeah, I felt like I had to help this person. I had to be the one to help them. And if I wasn't, then I was a failure. But people are so different. Like when you're coaching people, there's people that are better suited for coaching moms who are going through menopause. There's better people that are better at coaching people that have a lot of digestive issues. Yeah. And whatever you're good at, like recommend them to someone. Like it's okay. And if you guys are listening to this too, find a coach that that can help you with your specific thing. Window shop. Yeah, yeah. window shop. Just because you follow like this one person on Instagram you look up to doesn't mean that they're going to be the best fit for you. Yeah, and it I've might learned. take trial and error for you, mm -hmm. but 100% like window shop. That's why these coaches are putting themselves out there. That's true. Um, that's why I'm putting myself out there is because anytime somebody told me, you know, I've had a few, uh, a few calls, of course, like anybody that hasn't had these calls of like a client being like a potential client saying like, Hey, like I'm just looking around, but like, know that I very much appreciate your time. Like I, I do want to work with you. I do just want to like verify that like, Hey, I'm trying to make sure that like these people are this fit for me on, and are not. That mm -hmm. is just a part of the name of the game when you are in a service industry. It's yeah, very true. That's just a part of it. Just like when you're shopping for a hairstylist, you got to find the person that you vibe with. Oh yeah, I've learned that the hard way. When you met me, I had full on ombre hair. My hair was just like it was all like ash brown right here, and then it was nice. just. Oh, oh, I used to have the that line. too. Yes, I had yeah, that too. Same, same, oh, same. My We've God. all been there. And I thought it looked so good. I was like, oh my <laughs> God, was, yeah. that was the thing. It was, it was cool then. Yeah, it was cool then. But it, you know, when you look back, you're like, times have changed, bro. I will say, I love your hair now. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever you're doing is good. I forgot my eyebrow gel. From Essence, you know, that's like a little $2 thing that you can get a quick little solution. And so that's why I like slicked it down a little bit earlier. Looks so good. this entire time I've been thinking about in the podcast is I really hope my flyaways just aren't going <laughs> fucking they're nuts They're not, right they're now. not. We would tell you. you <laughs> help you that's what spray. real friends are. It's like not even tell, but it's just like, let, let me. Do it for let you. Let me just lick yeah. my finger and Scott slick them down. Get so mad at me whenever he has like this little tiny dry pot, pot, spot on his mustache. That it's just like some like inherently dry spot he has. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he has like some kind of like rosacea or like very, very mild, like eczema or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And anytime I'm like kind of doing like a slight, like motherly thing or like, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to like get it from him. He's like, Oh, what? <laughs> Why are you doing that? And I was it's like, I'm thing. just trying to help you. It's like, if you have something in your teeth, yes. like, so he's like, let me get it. And I was like, but you can't see it. I literally <laughs> I do that to Zach so much. Eek. It oh, be. it's so annoying. And I'm like, when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm my mother. My mom used to do this to me. If my eyebrow was out of place, she'd just grab my eyebrow and like plug it. Or if my hair, she still does this to me to this day. She looks at me and just fixes the things. And I was like, mom. And now I am my mother. I literally no. put his eyebrow down. I'm like, you have flyaways. Let me do your eyebrows. Let me do this. And he's like, my mom always had to ask me permission of, can I fix this? Oh my or God, can no. I touch you? Because I would give yeah. her my mom's the just like, meanest Come here. look. Yeah, I don't like, well, I, I like physical touch with like significant others. I don't like being touched by other people. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't like, I mean, it's not that extreme. Like I'll hug my friends, but oh, like to yeah. hug a stranger, I definitely get like yeah. uncomfortable. I'm a, <laughs> definitely a stranger hugger. Yeah. <laughs> like if I like you and I'm just like, if I didn't know Julie, I'd be like, fuck, this girl looks good. And I was like, I want her, want to know her. I want her to know. <laughs> who I am I'm just gonna introduce myself and say like some kind of compliment because I could come up with like a are you extroverted you. 
I would say so, yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, like, again, just, like, if even if I'm working and I'm not interacting with people, if I go and, like, work at a coffee shop mm-hmm. or something, I very much enjoy being around people even if I'm not interacting with yeah. them. Yeah. I think that's why I like the gym so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it's, like, happening around you, yeah. even so. I Shit's love that. happening, man. Yeah, guys, when like- she goes to the gym, she's – Popping around saying hi to everyone. I'm mm-hmm. the complete opposite. It's the Midwestern values. I'm literally like, hi. I'm working out. I mean, Bye. you saw what meeting me was like. I was yeah. like, if you didn't, if you and Scott hadn't come up to me, I, like I wouldn't have said hi. And I would have been I'm so, so sad. introverted and like scared all the time. It would have been really funny to experience if this situation happened because I would have loved to hear your opinion or hear what would have happened. I am the type of person where if I know you or know of you and we connected on Instagram, we mm-hmm. at least followed each other, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's say the first time I saw you, I saw you from across the gym. I would be like, hey, oh my God. <laughs> What's going on? She's the complete opposite of us. Straight come towards you and be like, "Dude, it's so great to meet you." I would start crying. No, I'm kidding. I was. It's not that extreme, but I definitely would like stand there and like. It depends on the day. I do have like my more like outgoing days and social days. She's crazy. Yeah, no. Once you know me, I don't shut up. But like when I'm. When it's new people, I definitely get like really shy. mm -hmm. Know that I like really appreciate you like just being you and like whatever is like happening right now simply because (laughs) when I saw Julia and we we first connected because we did adult session what was like a week or two ago Mm -hmm. um I was just I said something and I was really hoping it was not going to be said the wrong way and I was like I really hope I can see Kendall open up more like Mm -hmm. I want to see that because she seems like a really great individual and I was like you just wait yeah (laughs) oh it comes yeah the more you're around me the more I open up and and then it doesn't stop (laughs) and then she turns in like she it's almost like she's like a puppy who has the zoomies like ah, she gets the zoomie, then she's like, I'm Kendall, I'm Kendall, I'm Kendall. So and then like, she's like, done. <laughs> she's vision when I walked in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I, we hadn't seen our other friend Erica in a long time. And she was here um, yesterday and the day before. And we went to work out. I don't think I stopped talking for more than three seconds. Like yeah. I was constantly like, I don't know. I get like, it's like almost good anxiety yeah, where I get so excited. Human. Yeah. You're like, what can we talk about next? And then yeah. we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Yeah. That's yeah. how I feel right now on this podcast. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like what are we going to do? I know my, my like just a, a, a good anxiety and good anxiousness like my like face like and the reason why we had to close that window was like I was just smiling because I was so excited to be here and I was thinking about this it so fun. Fun. I love I was that. like do I look like a weirdo because I'm just so excited no, not at all and I was like looking at you and looking at <laughs> Julian and I was like eh, and do they see that my face is twitching right now and then it's hard to keep my smile up because I can't stop you smiling. do bring like really good energy yeah. too though because like I've like seen your Instagram for like years but like it's different when you're sitting down with someone and like really feeling their energy and you have really good energy I I I don't know where it came from maybe it's uh from my dad because I like explain my mom's like this rhino that you don't want to fuck with and she's you know just badass (laughs) you don't want to fuck with her she'll give you just the most worst look you can ever think about in your entire life. And you're um, like, I just shit my pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me go back in my room. Um, and my dad is just kind of like this little squirrel. So I think I got like the two of those. Um, and so like, I think with my dad, he always wants to make sure somebody else is kind of like taken care of before them. Mm-hmm. Even though in like some aspects, Scott will tell me like I'm a little bit selfish in some ways. And I, I think you have to, and I've gotten that from my mom because mm-hmm. she's just had to like sacrifice so much for his kids. Um, that like with my dad, like I've always seen him, like he'll just, talk to random people and he'll oh just my like god my dad's the that's same my dad my dad yeah. literally we always make this joke in the family that we need to have him on one of those kid leashes because if we go anywhere <laughs> he's gone no, and literally. he's talking to some guy he's talking to some lady he's holding someone's baby literally I'm literally <laughs> like or he's sleeping on a bench f- five blocks away in the middle of nowhere sleeping on a bench that. My dad's the type to like even be in the car and roll down the window just to yell something at a stranger oh yeah, and roll it back up and keep driving. I'm like, oh These my These enigmas, God. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about something like that. It was actually just happened a few days ago when I was helping Scott with some of his content downtown. There was this girl and she kind of like had like these beautiful like Lana Del Rey vibes. And it was like, Ooh. you know, like a little bit retro and her outfit was like modern retro vibes like that. And like we connected, but then I think she was just like so in a hurry. And we were on that bridge downtown next to the library. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scott's getting this content. And I'm sure she was just like, oh, I don't want to be in this dude's content. But I was like, you look great. You need a photo. Here you go. <laughs> oh. um, and in the sense, uh, I was just like, it's even for myself. Like, I just have to get it out. If I see someone and I'm just like, wow, they look great. 
I don't even, I, of course I do it because I love making people feel good, but like, I just need to get it out because I, I've recognized this whole conversation has helped me recognize that like, I just need to say it. So I don't have to feel like I'm like keeping it in. I love that because a lot of people don't do that. Like my mom and I were talking about this the other day and I'm that kind of person too. I'm very introverted, but if I like something about somebody or an outfit or their energy, I have to tell them because I never want them to think that I'm staring at them in a negative way or that I'm being like a mean girl. Most like 99.9% of the time it's because I admire something about them. So I like wish that more girls would do that. I I think if we almost recognize like just honestly, like being adult women, you know, most of the time when somebody's kind of like staring at you like that, especially another female or anything like that, most of the time they should be like mature enough to be like, Hey, like, it's not that I don't like you. It's just like, I think you're it's really fucking the cool. opposite. I like something about I you to work on that. Stop <laughs> looking at you. Cause I have resting bitch face and I'm she always does. like, I'll say it to her. It's even the eyeliner. I'm like, it's the intense yeah, eye. My eyes idea. can't do that. So you have a beautiful eye shape. Mine that? just bug thank out of my you, face. So you. I don't think, I think people are like, come up to me. Cause I'm like, Squirrel. I think mine are big too. And I'm like, ah. I'm like working on like smiling more at like other girls in the gym because I'll like even say to Julia, if we're working out and I'm like, damn, her legs look crazy. And you you'll be like go tell her and I'm like no I'm just, like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna awkwardly stare at her while she lives did you feel like with growing up with your brothers I mean uh if I'm thinking about a quintessential situation uh with like growing up three brothers and you're the, the youngest girl mm-hmm. it was actually the opposite situation it's I have my older sister my triplet brother the first one my triplet sister and then me so it's three women on top of them like mm-hmm. four women on top of my mom mm-hmm. you know my that my brother was surrounded so like i can understand why he's the way that he is in some instances and for like you do you feel like your brothers took up a lot of that energy and that's why you only reserve your energy for certain people oh for sure Oh, Big definitely. Facts. That was my drop. Um, I'd say like my whole family is really talkative. And like, even when you get to know me and I am outgoing, I'm still the quietest one in my family. They're yeah. all like extreme extroverts. You're like 10%. Minus of one of them is like me. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> wanted to kind of move into your move to Florida. Like what happened? Cause I, I, when that happened, it was like, I obviously couldn't see you. I didn't really, I just can watch from afar and see all these amazing things happening. So what made you move and what happened? Why like what happened when you were there? Cause now you're working with all these companies, Sebum, mm-hmm. your man was taking photos of Sebum and what, what, like what happened? I need to know. Okay. So, uh, Scott was also working with another coach at the time and doing kind of like a lot of his back end work. He was even on his podcast at the moment. Right. Mm. And so, um, Scott learned a lot through that pro- process. He also loves just doing like the back end operation shit. Like, I mean, just the dude just does not stop learning and it just blows my fucking mind because I'm like, I don't have the time for that. Like, I mean, like, you know, how is this going to benefit me? And I have that stupid thought in my head, but he is that person. And I just got so incredibly lucky to be able to like have him not only help out with like the business mindset and like pushing myself like business wise and like creatively and stuff like that, um, that like, that's just been like kind of like the glue that's like held me together. Cause I, I, I swear to you, if like probably like, you know, uh, I didn't have Scott whenever I was approached to initially coach. I probably wouldn't have gone through with it after yeah. I parted ways with yeah. my first coach. You with think Ayla. you might have gone back to your probably Ulta job? If I didn't security. have Scott's support or like you know just his quick wittedness, dude, like you know find yourself a Scott man. Like, How long have time. you guys been together? Oh, um, that's a fun story, but we can leave that for like personal conversations. Um, this coming July will be six years. Yeah, which is nuts to say. And your boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Yes. Okay. We are not in a rush whatsoever to get married. That's of course, awesome. I'd love a ring, but like, I'm not going to put financial pressure on him. And I know he wouldn't want to do either for me too. I love that. So, you know, we're truly just enjoying like being partners and literally yeah. living life because it's not different any other way. Yeah. You know, that's your person. Yes. Yeah. Very much my human. I love, I love my ginger beard human. You guys are very cute together. <laughs> very. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so... When uh, we recognized that we didn't want to work with um, who, we, who he's doing a lot of like back end work for yeah. um, and very much like integrated in his business, um, parted ways. And we actually knew the owner of now Raw, Raw but also Revive. It was mainly kind of like Revive was like the hot brand at first. And then mm-hmm. like, Re- you know, Raw is kind of like turned into that. Mm-hmm. And Revive is a really good sister brand. Um, we actually knew the owner of both brands because they're sister brands, right? So from there, um, we have never been to the Olympia before. And it was when the Olympia was in Orlando for the first time. And we're like, 
we don't like to fly. So we actually drove and we've made that drive all the way from Texas to Florida so many times. It's wow. a long drive. Yeah. It's like a two day drive. I've though. done it's it once nuts. and it was awful. It's, it's, a, it's not a fun drive. Like driving through Florida is great and kind of part of Texas. I'm like, you know, Houston is okay driving through, but man, everything in between is just like, uh, it's mm-hmm. like Kansas, but I love the simplicity of Kansas. So like there is that essential, that, you know, concept of it. So parted ways and, um, Dom was just like, I could use a Scott. You know, we got talking to him. We hung out with him just because. And Dom is the owner of? He is the owner of Raw and Revive. Okay. Along with Matt Jansen and uh, Chris. Chris is, I believe, I, I believe just primarily Raw. Okay. Um, and just from there, um, we went to the Olympia, and I was already a athlete with Revive. That was before Raw was kind of like released, so mm-hmm. to speak, or like live, or like, you know, they did it. I'm sure they were in production at that time. But I was already a, a um athlete for revive at that time and so i already knew of the company i knew that they were in florida i knew the gym wasn't far away Mm -hmm. um i knew like you know the people that like chose to have me as an Mm -hmm. athlete i was like i want to go meet these people okay guys we are back julia had to take a pee break (laughs) everybody had to take pee breaks too many too many coffees and liquids but okay so you went to the olympia decided to move to florida uh, okay, so we were at the Olympia. We met the owner, Dom. Yeah. And, you know, that was kind of like at a moment where we're like, hey, like we want to part ways with, you know, who we're, who we're with at the moment. And um, he was like, I could use a Scott. Because he actually already had Scott do some like photo work and a couple other things before we even decided to move or even before we decided, mm. uh, before we even visited Florida. And um, he's like, this is great. Like, you know, I, I really could use somebody like you. So... He approached it and he's like, hey, you guys aren't totally tied down to Texas. One, for like one instance, I I never thought that I would move away from Texas because I already had a feeling that like I would want to end up back in Texas whatever way it panned out. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, cool. I was like, I've never lived on the East Coast. You know, I'm this girl from Kansas. I've lived in Arizona. I've lived in Mississippi. And Texas just like takes the fucking cake for me. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I was just like, yeah, I want to experience Florida for however long it's going to be. Like, there wasn't even a time frame or anything like that. And I was just like, yeah. I was like, I'm actually technically closer to my mom. It's only an eight-hour drive rather than, like, a 15-hour drive to see my mom now. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was actually, side note, like, valuable time that I was so glad, like, when I lived in Florida to be able to see my mom more often. So we decided, we're like, cool. I was like, you know, Savannah, you're already with this brand. I think by that time... They would have already released Raw, and Raw was already, you know, live and kind of a thing. And uh, we moved down there, and uh, that was before, like, uh, you know, anybody that's kind of there right now has actually moved around. It was, like, super quiet when we first moved there, and, like, we were getting into the groove of things. um, And, you know, I was lucky enough to kind of, like, see um, for at least, like, when I would come visit and hear from Scott and such of, like, how everything was kind of, like, ran, and that was a really cool perspective to see because there's just, it's so much opportunity out there, and I hope a lot of people could get somewhat of an opportunity like that because when you're just in your own world and you don't explore or you don't have these opportunities, you don't see, like, how much there truly is out there that you can, that you can positively take advantage of. True. Like, in a good selfish way, like, you should fucking go and do whatever you wanted, and I feel like, going there for like almost two years that we were there really helped me kind of like solidify like there is so much that an individual can do yeah um so when we first got there it was like i said um a lot a lot more quiet it was before the gym even had the leg day room it was when they were still shipping raw and revive product out of the same gym area the gym was connected they they called it the warehouse The, the the gym the office and the um, warehouse was all connected. Wow. And so, uh, Scott was like technically at the gym, but it was because the offices were there 24 seven. And so was everybody else. Mm -hmm. It was a little, I think it was actually just this past fall or actually almost a year ago on top of that, whatever, um, a few months later until they moved into another warehouse and then they just moved into like the really big warehouse that they did. So like they've had this exponential growth. Yeah. And you've get to be a part of that. It was really cool to be a part of, and it was, it's the same thing. Like, of course, everybody always wants to be a part of that situation, right? And I feel extremely thankful, and I love still being a part of the brand and, you know, being an athlete with them. Um, And so from that perspective, it was just more so like, hey, babe, you want to be in the shoot? And I'm just like, you you guys want me? I was like, all right, (gasps) cool. Like, Mm -hmm. I I can do it. Like, I'm sure. Like, there's not some other girl that you, like, want to, like, you know, shoot with. And I was just like. Okay, I can do this. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So you've got to stand next to Chris. Chris Bumstead. Yeah, Chris is a, a him. 
Courtney, um, everybody there are like incredible humans. They um, seem very genuine. I, Chris and Courtney is as fucking genuine as you get. Like that. you don't want to stop hanging out with them. And mm. it's like, not just, it's not even because of their following, but yeah. just because of who they are and like what they've been through and just kind of like these kind of conversations that you can have with him, which we've had before. Um, I'm glad that that's the role model of the fitness community right now, that God, it's a genuine good the person. Two of them are literally the, or people. the best people to be in that position. And I like so very much like ap- appreciate the opportunity to just like be around them, you know, and also just be like, you know, considered friends mm-hmm. um, because I, it's just a cool, situ- it's such a great little gold nugget. It mm-hmm. is so cool, especially since like, a lot of times you see these people having like millions and millions of followers, especially like Seabum, what, four time Mr. Olympia now? I would even say I hear it also from people that like follow us. Oh, wow. The three of us. They're like, oh, you're like Savannah Joy. And I'm like, I'm just No, I'm, Savannah. I'm just yeah. Savannah Joy. <laughs> um, so like, you know, Chris and Courtney view it the exact same way. They're mm-hmm. like, I'm just Chris yeah. or Chris. Yeah, he's so cute. He's like the, oh, I, I, love I, I love my brother, but um, in a sense, he, him and Melissa, Melissa is another amazing individual mm-hmm. that like, you know, you just always want more time with. Um, That's a sister, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, his sister is another incredibly cool human being. If you guys don't follow her, like she's she just, compete, right? Need to. Um, she has competed. Oh. She, I, for what I know, just based upon what I've seen recently from social media, she does want to compete again. Oh, that's so cool. I think she does have that intentions because she's got a crazy cool. That's so freaking yeah. cool. Um, she has insane dumps. Runs in the fam. <laughs> yeah, her, yeah. Uh, like the two of them, one, it's always fun to see siblings interact. Yes. Um, but man, something about Canadians and Courtney. Mm. Just cool fucking people, man. Are it's they as cool. nice as it seems? Yeah, but they're also like, um, I would say like Canadians in a way, like they're, they're a little bit more direct than Americans, if I, like I can it. make that assumption. Uh, at least from my experience, like me being from the Midwest, like East Coast, you might say differently. Um but uh, yeah, they 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 just it's if anybody has ever seen Letter Kenny, they're like quick witted. Oh, you know, like I love that. Funny and quick witted at the same time. If you guys have not seen Letter Kenny, that's like five percent of what you get from them. Not exactly that, but um, just experiencing the quick wittedness because I would always try and like again like it was this brother concept that I had with Chris because m- me and my triplet brother it was always just kind of like all three of us triplets wanted to be separate from each other because in yeah. growing up, we were always just associated as the triplets and not necessarily always as like individuals. Mm-hmm. And so with that, you know, like Melissa gave me kind of like this feeling of like, since I'm not always around my older sister or just a sister effect, like I was instantly gravitated towards her because of that. And she's such a warm, inviting human being. And she's just like stupid, beautiful to look at. Like every time I looked at her, I was like, does she think that I'm like looking at her in any weird way? Because <laughs> yeah. this woman is just drop like, dead gorgeous. I'm in love with you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she's just an incredible human being. And Chris, again, is just kind of gave me like that fun sibling rivalry rivalry that I never got with my siblings because mm-hmm. we were all just in our own little worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried to make like some kind of like stupid joke about like a license plate he got on his car and be like, who would have fucking got that stupid car with that what stupid license plate? What is it, Mr. Olympia? Plate? I can't remember what it is, but I remember doing some kind of joke and he just like in the coolest form just like looked at me because we were at the gym and we were like both working out and he just said something like so fucking witty and I was just like, I can't compete with you. You're like, <laughs> touche. You can't let me win. Yeah. Can't you That's, just let that me is win this one time? Is. That's true. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about like feeling deserving of, I guess, what's the word? Situations. Yeah, just like events. having these opportunities. Was this something that was scary or intimidating to you, making that move, meeting these people, being in no. that position? Uh-uh. You um, felt ready? I'll let you drink. <laughs> So I think maybe seeing my dad so much throughout my life and like driving four, six hours and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. that was nothing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like to like, it was like road trips for us kids. And that's why I like driving more than flying and just also the anxiety of flying. Mm -hmm. Um, But in a sense, I think because I did previously live in Arizona with an ex, I just got my aesthetics license. You know, um, like I said, stuff didn't work out for us triplets at KU. And we're just like, you know, we should like go other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, because we all three went at the same time. And I was just like, you know what? I'm I'm long distance with this dude at this moment. And uh, I got my aesthetics license because my mom wasn't going to let me draw, you know, uh, live halfway across the country um, 
without something, you know, under my belt. And so yeah. I'm always appreciative of like my mom's feminist um, views that way. Cause I feel like I have a healthy balance of it. Um, and so from there, uh, living in Arizona and then breaking up with him and living with my older sister in like Mississippi for a hot minute wow. and then moving here with Scott soon after that, like I've never had, a uh, adversions. Yeah. Um, it's like you're used to moving around. Yeah. Like I've just wanted to experience. Um, and if those opportunities arose, I'm just like, cool. You yeah. know, like house is a house in a sense. Um, you know, like it, it, it will make it, you will make it of what it is. Like it, it's, it's only like positive from there. And even if it doesn't work out, like it's going to teach you something that if you weren't ever going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, um, moving there, of course I didn't want to move away from Austin. Like yeah. Growing up in Kansas, I never thought there was such a cool city like Austin. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that you could like go hiking and swimming and paddle boarding and go to the lake That's what and I love go about to like here. these super funky music places and, and restaurants and, and coffee shops restaurants and like literally have the best food of your entire life. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I never knew that there was this kind of like utopia. And even though like, it's just ever growing, that's what comes of it when you live in a city like this. Yeah. I fully understand why people complain about it because there's shit to complain about, but it's just that cool of a city. And mm -hmm. I knew that like in some ways, like I would always want to come back to at least Texas in general. Yeah. So moving away from Florida, I, like I said, I always had the inkling that I was going to like somehow get back whenever yeah. it came. And so I was just like, let's go experience Florida, see what it's all about. And mm -hmm. like, you know, like everybody's like, oh, Florida's so great. And we like go on vacations in Florida. And I was like, yeah, Florida is great. Um, and I think it has its really cool perspectives. I was never cold. Um, so that's one thing I really mm -hmm. liked, but it's always so lush and so green. Um, but it's crazy cool and interesting to see all like the, 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 the differences like neighborhood wise and just like how oh, people the are. The culture there is so different. The it's so different. Like, oh, e especially crazy. when you get into like West Palm and stuff like that, like raw and revive is actually in a very small town. That's like 45 minutes North of, um, West Palm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like where families are and stuff yeah. and like retirees and stuff. That's where I'd like to be. <laughs> yeah. And so um, at the end of the day, it was an experience and it was really cool in it. Um, you know, like my business was doing good. Scott was doing great. We were lucky enough to buy our own house there. Yeah. Um, our first house. Um, so that was a really cool experience. It, it looked like a Texas home. And so that's why we Aww. got it. Cause it didn't look like that's a Florida cute. home. And I was just like, Oh, I at least really I have like some of my roots. It's also a huge milestone. It's a crazy milestone yeah. that I never thought I would. Eh ever be able to do before 30 and it just blows my mind so i i never fully i think realized how big of a milestone that is yeah. for sub 30. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like you struggle with that like you struggle with really just sitting down and appreciating like how much you've done and how far you've come oh i feel like i undermined it yeah again again i think it's because of like you know that deserving factor like i I mean, I, I would love for everybody to kind of like experience this. And it, it's, it's thankfully like what's happened throughout my life. Um, I just have never wanted to, you know, uh, I would say like, what is it like chauvinistic or yeah. just like throw it in people's faces or anything like that. So like, you know, like I, I just, I, I try to just take it for what it is and it still every single instant just doing what I was doing and being approached and then like gaining a following and then like having my own business and then moving to Florida and like being around these like crazy cool people. Yeah. Um, it, you just take it as it comes. Yeah. So I think that's just like kind of how I approach it. And again, just like, you know, you don't feel deserving, but yeah. it's still an extremely cool experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that so much. That's really cool. I mean, it, it is so difficult too sometimes to just really like pause and be present with all the things that you've been able to do and, because there's a lot of people that don't think that they can move from their situation and they oh, might not yeah, be able can. to. Oh, yeah, they can. So, you know, sometimes you feel stuck. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the situations that like were kind of like those cool milestones and those cool events that happened in my life and like your guys's life and stuff like that, that happens as you do it. There's it's you can't put a date on it. Um, I have been very good in the gray area to just mm -hmm. have it cut like let it go and ha have it come as it you know comes to you so in that perspective um you know it's it's you just have to like hope and anticipate it for it work for it all at the same time yeah and it will come however way it is going to yeah and it might not look exactly how you thought it was going to be and i don't and think I'm it's sure. ever going to look exactly like no. the way that you think like it, it would be incredibly cool but i don't feel like it would be as um 
fulfilling, enthralling, and rewarding as it is if it came in this perfect package that you mm-hmm. wanted. It's be. true. Like That's you, what we talked about the other yeah. day. We had like a whole podcast about how perfectionism is holding you back. And like, oh, 100%. We really dove into how like you need to enjoy the process. You need to enjoy the failing. You need to enjoy the learning or else or you're not going to appreciate deal when you get with there. the failing. Yeah. 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 Is it kind of like, a, <laughs> you know, like, and I was never this type of person that's just kind of like, you know, again, like the, the go-getter and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I've never like, you know, my Scott loves v- listening to like Gary Vee and like people like that, which I, I love that, but it almost intimidates me because oh. I, I hear every single thing that they're saying, but I'm just like crawling into my shell of just like, oh, there's so much to do. And you're like telling me that I need to have like all of this energy pent up for it. And I just don't fucking have it. Like yeah. what, do, what do these people do that like have all this energy? And again, like he's great for speaking to people on multiple levels, but like Scott is just like, we should do this. We should do this. Here's all to do like, this. And you're like, long. And I'm just like, what can I do today? <laughs> Julia and, and Scott are going to get along. Yeah, we're, we're going to be you besties. Guys, <laughs> you guys are very similar. Another thing, like, as you meet other couples, as you meet other people, mm-hmm. and, like, how Kendall and I are very similar and just how, like, we approach things and stuff like that. And then, like, how, you know, um, in couple situations, like, I'm probably your significant other. Yes. And you're Scott. Yes. Like, just, it's just switched in yeah. genders. You know, yeah, it's that's funny. True. It's Zach true. Zach is very go with the flow. Yeah, he's very, very go with the flow. Like, chill, it'll happen, whatever. And he's also the behind the scenes guy. Mm-hmm. He's the, has everything. He's at the marketing plan. He has this. He has the lead generation. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm just the face. <laughs> Let me just go on camera and say my voice. Well, the one thing that I wanted to end with, and I know that when we met was something that you kind of struggled with, was putting on muscle. You you told me that you've always been kind of like a, more with like a runner's body, and I bet there's a lot of people listening to this that might be in a similar situation to where they almost feel like they can't build muscle, and they think that they're always going to be small. Speak to that. Yeah, S-M-O-L, small. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've really tried to not just... Uh, kind of like, you know, you sometimes you just uh, unintentionally, but inherently put yourself down and you're like, I'm small or like, you know, like I, my legs are too big. I'm fat. Like whatever it is that like pops into your head. Um, I think one thing that we kind of like talked about, that's like just a big point is like, you are not what you once were. So like, if you recognize that, like, I'm not that still the 16 year old Savannah that was just breaking a hundred pounds and running um, and like trying to put on weight, even though like there was absolutely no guidance at that time, I was eating only pasta because my coaches told me to eat pasta and stuff like that. Pasta is life. Um, but in general, like if you can just at least like get, um, to the realization that you are an ever evolving human being, your body is going to grow like just biologically how it does. So why should your mind stay in the same place of associating yourself with that same person that you were years ago oh. or however long it was or anything like that? So in that perspective, like I've had to come to terms that like, I can't keep associating myself as a small human being. Like I have to give myself and my mind the opportunity because it's already what I'm doing within my training, within my, you know, nutrition and stuff. That's already what I'm doing is like, I'm putting these actions forward to not be a small human, but yet my mind is still regressed in this thought of like, you are just this twig, my mom in a sense in a lo- very loving way because <laughs> I won state powerlifting my junior year at a hundred pounds. And she calls me pipe cleaners. Um, But she's like, yeah, those pipe cleaners won like state powerlifting, which it was like three girls in the hundred pound division. So mind you, but, um, yeah, she was just like, I, you know, she called me like pipe cleaner when I was younger. And so like those things stick with you, you know, and it wasn't anything negative that she would say. It was just a fun little joke. And on the other hand, I was thunder thighs since I was born. Complete <laughs> opposite. And fuck, man, let me tell you, I would love to have 25% of your legs on me. And Scott's ass is so massive. It's unfair. It's just what happened. It's always, it's always the, the men. That's men. what I was telling Savannah. I was like, they have all the lashes, they have the thick yeah. eyebrows, and they have the butt. They Literally. don't need it. Yeah. Literally. And so, um, yeah, like you... You can't continue to let your mind be in the same place if you're going to want physical change. It's yeah. just, the, it's it's the just of it, the end of it. And if you're going to continue to think that you're the same person, you're going to stay in that same body because your so mind respond, your body responds off of what your mind thinks. It's so true. If it's you continue so to say that you're a small person, that you're ugly, that you're not confident, that you're unworthy. That you're not strong you're or not you strong. can't do this weight. Like, dude, you are just staying in the same negative circle that you are allowing your mind to stay in. Okay. And that's what a lot of people do is they allow themselves and they don't recognize that there is actual change to be like, 
why do I continue to not think myself as a strong human when I want to be like these strong humans that I love? Like I looked up to like Ashley Horner and Dana Lynn Bailey when I first started training in like 2013 and like earlier on, that's when I first saw like muscular, strong women. And I'm like, fuck, that looks good. I'm just Mm -hmm. like, man, these women are just stacked. And I was like, I love it. I was like, you guys look so good. I was like, I could stare at you all day long. So um, yeah, it's just like, if they changed and if they thought they were in the same space, you yeah. know, do they think they would have been the humans that they are today? And so it's it's just you either be an adult is like something that I just recently posted about. You be an adult and you recognize that your mindset is going to guide you. Mm. And if you're not going to allow that guidance and have it be kind of like a positive affirmation for yourself and it doesn't have to be these like you know, affirmations, if I love myself and like, kind of like the quintessential thing, like truly like look at yourself and just be like, why am I such a dick to myself? Mm-hmm. Like, why am I still thinking that I'm the same person when I'm trying to actively change that? Yeah. Um, Which is a hard conversation for a lot of people to yeah. have. So hard. It's yeah. super hard for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you have to literally, if you want to become something, if you want to go outside of the norm, if you want to compete in a show, start a business, have a better relationship, you need to act like you have already done that. And, and it's your responsibility. It is your responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. your responsibility to act like the person that you want to be. I mean, on my uh, bulletin board, every day staring in front of my face at my desk, it says, what would Miss Olympia do? That's a good one. Because... What would this person that I'm going to become, what would they act like? How Was would they speak? Francois? Is her name Francois? Franciel. Franciel. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What would they act like? What would they sound like? How would they talk to themselves? So I kind of want to talk about the small girl. How did that small girl talk to herself versus now, Miss Big Delt Girl? Wow. <laughs> How do you Why talk to yourself that's... now? Oh, man, this makes me uncomfortable, but in the best way possible. How did that small girl talk to herself? Um... <sighs> You know, it's, it's just a matter of even not always talking to yourself, but just doing it and putting some type of action forward. Yeah. So like so many people think you need to have two plus two to equal four in order to like get to that action and get that result. But like sometimes it just takes like having the like gumption to be able to just follow through with an action without even this, uh, this expectation that it's going to hit something and it's, it's like going to make it for you and it's going to change everything. Mm-hmm. Like you just need to put some action towards it and it doesn't even need to be the largest action. It just needs to be something that makes you feel good. Yeah. That makes you feel like you. And that was like what training was for me. And so like that other two, that plus two that I was missing, I was already training and I love to train. Like that's what I did all the time and I probably trained too much. And what ended up happening is just like, oh God, I really got to be an adult about this and I really got to get my nutrition forward because, you know, even though I'm a small human and I can take in a whatever amount of food, like I need to have more structure to it. I need to take in more protein yeah. um, because it was just purely carbohydrates based and probably a lot more fat than, you know, I, I needed at that moment. Mm-hmm. And like actually just be like, dude, you need to become aware of this. Yeah, You know, like that's, that's the biggest thing. And what I actually see a majority of my clients is like, you know, they love to train, which I love. I love clients that train. You need clients that love to train, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so in general, um, you know, whatever situation it is for you and you're lacking in it, God, you just you got to get the gumption and just be like, just do it. Just do it, Savannah. You just need to follow through with it. You can't be perfect. And I've never had concern about being perfect because I know I'm never perfect. That's good. <laughs> that's kind of the thing. It's always good. It's always been very perplexing in my mind for like individuals like you um, that it's just be like, how are you so on point? I will have very long periods of times where like I am 90% on, but I know that there's always going to be some kind of variance. And I've been okay with that because it's gotten me to where I am right now. Like if anything, there's never been a time to where I have just been 100 out of 100 Mm. check-ins and stuff like that. Maybe they're going good, but maybe I had a couple of days where I only got in like, you know, half a gallon of water or like even less than that. Like so many people let these little tiny metrics just get to them and just completely Mm -hmm. destroy them. And it's just like, dude, come on. Would you tell your five-year-old to just get destroyed by, you know, like if T-Rex took down Godzilla, (laughs) you know, like, uh, I don't know. That was a bad analogy, but in (laughs) general, like, it's just like, would you allow your five-year-old or your friend just to be put down by something that's so minuscule when there's other things that they're doing so right or in the right manner? So is that how you were talking to yourself? A lot of just like, this is what you're not doing. This is what you could be doing. A lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas instead of action. Mm. Um, I've never, I, of course I do wish that I like 
um, took my nutrition more seriously. I'd probably have better legs by now. I'd probably like do this, but like, again, like that's not changing that. Like I have drastically changed my physique from where I was in high school. Um, and oh, yeah. if I looked at my 12 year old self, and I mean, if I looked at my high school self and I saw me now, I'd be like, that girl is, you'd be cool. so proud. Who is that? <laughs> um, that's such so, a good like position to put ourselves in just as a reminder of how far we've come. It's like, you you are now what your goal was five years ago yeah. and you're only going to want to change more mm -hmm. like you tell me cap dells and i'd be like fuck my dads have felt really small lately <laughs> but like it's just it's so funny and uh you know i my inherent thought like my negativity that kind of sticks with me and i don't know if you guys think the same way too i'd be very interested is like you tell me i have like really cap dells but i'm like yeah my lower half is shit though oh yeah okay i have this but i don't have this instantly Always. just like put it down and it's just like but why? Like they're better than where they were before. Mm -hmm. You're actively like trying to put some things in place to make it better. Like, yeah. how are you just completely downplaying that? Like, why am I completely? Downplaying it comes back that? to that worthiness thing. I think you know? even just speaking of thank you instead of voicing, oh, but they could be better. It's oh, true. but they could do that. That's what I'm working on. Like, if someone asks how my day is and my day's been fine, like a lot of the times I'm like, oh, it's been long. Like what I said to you this morning, yeah. it's like, I've had a really good morning and I was yeah. really productive. Like, why am I voicing it was so negatively? It actually, a pretty good morning. Yeah. I, that's just, it's the pattern that your mind is mm -hmm. used to on a consistent basis. Oh, it's a fine morning. It's like, the downplay no. effect. It's right outside. I got up at a good time or mm -hmm. like I had the breakfast that I wanted to or like whatever. I just woke up in a fine mood. Mm -hmm. That is great. Yeah. That's I so think crazy. just like putting more, um, even if it's forced positivity in your words, is what is then fed to your mentality. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what would you say to the girl out there that's listening that is putting all of these conditions on who she's going to become? Maybe she's saying she's small. Maybe she's not confident. Maybe she's telling herself all of these things. What would you tell her? Oh, it's a loaded it's a question. <laughs> I mean, uh, what kind of like comes to my mind is like you have every reason to work towards that because then you're slowly going to become that. Yeah. Um, and so like, you know, it's just, uh, I think even as a young adult, you're just kind of like the, the funny things that we are observing of like, you know, seeing your parents as adults and being able to experience that relationship. You see like young people or even just people that are actually older than you, like whatever spectrum it is. And you just see them like downplaying themselves and you just see that. And it's just sad. Mm. It's just sad. And anytime I would probably like see that in, in, in real life where I had a friend that like that and be like, dude, why are you being such a jerk to yourself? Like what, what is like the serious issue? Like, why are you just not thinking that you can just start working towards this? Not even just directly make it and like have it and like somehow reach this end goal because you're just never going to like why not work towards that because it's just going to be far more rewarding and make you feel like you more in the end like as you work on that throughout the life you know so that's yeah, kind of like my answer. thought of it is like you have every reason not to work towards it I mean if that's the right saying you have every reason to work towards it but you're thinking that it's going to like have this direct result and it's like no you're still going to go throughout every single day you're still going to like have certain struggles and such you're still going to think that you're this small human being you know but in general like if you're actively making those choices to be like hey like I'm trying not to associate myself with that being that small human because I want to be a strong human being mm -hmm. strong is going to look a lot of different ways you know I sometimes don't think I look really strong I'll look at you two and be like oh they look a lot stronger <laughs> than me like we're about to do legs after this and I'm <laughs> I know for a fact you're stronger than me so I'm the scared one so yeah. you know yeah, yeah, I, yeah. you know again another negative thought and excuse is like you say I know you're probably stronger than me Savannah and legs but I'm just like yeah but like I've only been at this gym for two three months and like this gym is new equipment See? for me there we go and you know I hate this hack squat or I hate this like hammer strength leg press and yeah. I'm a bitch with it like that's gonna be my excuse but it's just like mm. dude who cares? We're going to go and Strong. we're going to have a really good workout is, <laughs> is yeah. the moral of it. And yeah. Like I think before when I would go train with other people, I'd be so excited and I wouldn't even be concerned about the weight. Cause I just, I wasn't um, aware of like how truly strong humans can get. And I've been the strongest I've been in my entire life. So in that perspective, again, it's just like, you have to put this continued effort and it's going to be exhausting. It's going to be annoying, but I have never regretted not mm -hmm. working towards it. Yeah. It's the compound effect. Like uh, the best analogy that Ed Milet always says is that 
it's kind of like at a birthday party, there's a pinata. And maybe the first kid goes and he hits the pinata and it doesn't break. The second kid goes and he hits it and it doesn't break. The third kid goes, he hits it, it breaks open. That's what we're doing right now. Oh my God, with that's our, great. Yeah, with our mindset, with fitness. You're just compounding that over and over. The going to the gym when you don't want to. The eating the meals that you don't want to. You know, going and doing that cardio. You're hitting that pinata and eventually it's going to break and you're going to reach that goal. But it takes that compound effect. Oh my God. Not analogy. only... Just because I love pinatas, and I'm just right. thinking about all the different types <laughs> I love of pinatas what's inside. that are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but wow, that is honestly like such a great. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to like take that little toolbox um, and put that in mine. But uh, that's it, it's literally just so true. You've never seen unless they have an aluminum bat or some kind of sharp edge to it. You've never seen somebody hit a pinata and just directly tear it open in one single swish. That's so. It's true. It's a pinata for a reason. You just made the analogy way better. You did. <laughs> You've never, like, and that's how we think that we're going to reach our goals. That you have to. Say the pinata is the Olympia for me. Say it is. Or say the pinata is starting a YouTube channel for you and it blowing up. Oh, dude, would love to see a YouTube channel. For real. For like, we don't it. just <laughs> go at it and hit it and it just, boom. Like, that rarely ever happens. So why do we expect that to happen? My expectation, I was going to win my first show. I was going to become pro first. I was going to go to the Olympia. Boom, boom, boom. I did two out of those three things. And I was so mad at myself for a long time that I didn't win my first show, go pro, and then go straight to the Olympia. I did the first two, but not the last one. And for the longest time, I expected myself to knock that pinata down and just break it up. After you got your pro card? Oh, yeah. I expected immediately to go into the Olympia. Know now that the universe can't be rushed. Yeah. It's going to happen on its time, not on my time. And I know now that it's just better. So you guys listening, whatever it is that you're going after, it's the compound effect of the things that you're working on. Whether it's your confidence, whether it's fitness, whether it's your nutrition, keep grinding, keep going, keep by beating that pinata because eventually it's going to break and you're going to be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Pinatas <laughs> take multiple hits. Yes. Never in one swoosh. Yeah. I love that. God, that is such This a has great been one. so good. Okay, so the last question that we like to ask our guests, since it's the Know Your Power podcast, Mm. when was the moment that you realized how powerful you truly were? Man, I know this is like a mental and physical one, but a physical one just hit because it only, I mean, it helped me mentally so much. Yeah. Um, Man, I think when I've just like kind of like hit, um, and again, like my upper body has came so quickly to me. Again, this is such a gym bro bro response. And I'm so (laughs) glad you guys can relate to me on it. Um, but like upper bodies came so easily for me. And so I don't have to, I don't have to work drastically hard for it. In Mm. my lower half, I've had to work so hard. So I think when I finally hit, it was like 600 or plus on like a leg press, uh, for like, I think it was like eight reps or something. It was like on this beautiful Cybex leg press that I really miss so much. And I'm trying to get my gym to dig, to get. Mm -hmm. And when I hit certain weight on a, uh, um, a hack squat, another Cybex hack squat. And when I hit a hundred pounds, um, on each hand for an RDL, um, for dumbbell RDLs. And I, like, that was like blowing it out of the park. Like I thought if I was like, you know, teen sav and doing like fifties, I'd be like, well, that's a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about it now, I probably wouldn't be able to do it today. (laughs) But like, I mean, and that's what a lot of people don't anticipate is like you, you get to your strongest, then you let your body take a little bit of a break. You get to your strongest and then you take another break. Like it's these waves. Um, and so with that, like, um, I would say like the most empowered moment is when like not only was I physically able to achieve that, but I had to mentally believe Mm. that I was able to achieve that. And it was just maybe right then and there. I've never been the one to like think about it and be like, I can't stop thinking about hitting this 600 pound leg press. Like I progressed. It went from four plates to five plates on each side to six plates on each side to like however much it was. Mm. And like, I was just like, this is really cool. Like yeah. that is how it is. That the is the pinata. Effect. That is every single hit on the pinata that you were making is putting on another plate. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And that's just even on a deeper level too, like how powerful you truly are with strength. That was you saying, no, I am not this small girl. I'm not small. Yeah. I'm well. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Well, thank you so much for being this on. This was a great episode. I loved hearing everything. I could hang out with you guys I know. all day now. But we have See still later, Scott. more. I know. Bye, Scott. <laughs> We need both of you guys on. I really think we should like plan that. That would be a fun one. I would need to shut up and I'd probably let Scott just take the brunt of it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll let him talk, I guess. (laughs) Now, where can people find you? 
Um, social media, of course, I um, in, in the works. And another thing that I need, I'm slowly trying to trot into is possibly looking into an app. Um, you know, again, stability is yeah. just, again, a big thing for me. So, like, that's slight note, a thing that, like, a lot of people, like, uh, the self-deserving part. Like, should I put in another app? It's another form of revenue. Of course you can. Everybody should. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if you have the means to do it, go for it. Whatever it is. doesn't even have to be in fitness. Um, so Savannah Joy, for right now, I do technically have a YouTube. That's something I've been trying to get into as well. There's we no can, more trying. We can hold our s- each other accountable for that We're one. We're doing it. Well, we have the YouTube page down there. So it's that's there. A start. She did the two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Savannah Joy on all the things. Yeah, Savannah, uh, Savannah underscore Joy okay. with three Ys, cool. I believe Which it it'll be linked below. Yeah, if it'll be linked below yeah. too. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's mainly where you can find me. DM cool. me, ask me questions. Yeah. Just trying to put good stuff out there. Well, you're doing the good, you're doing yeah. the thing, and we'll be checking on you frequently to make sure you're still doing all the things. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Thank well, you guys so much. For thank you so me much on. for being on, guys. Thank you. Yeah, this is so fun. Well, guys, make sure you go and check out Savannah. Be immersed in her content. Also, there will be a YouTube video of us three training legs coming up on YouTube. So be there for that. We're also going to answer questions on that YouTube video. And as always, we love you all so much, and you are more powerful than you think. Bye. Bye. Bye.